Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. So in today's video, we're going to be going over how to create the detection system from the new Payday 3 game. Now this is obviously seen in many, many other games as well, but that's just the most recent example. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So as you can see, he already saw me there as soon as I spawned in, and that popped up on screen, filling up with red, and it came off screen when he stopped seeing us. So I'll show that again, starts filling up, and also points to where the enemy actually is. If I just stay there long enough for him to fully detect me, so it fills up completely, he's going to start chasing me, and then when it goes out of sight, which is going to be quite difficult on this map, it will start going back down, and then he will stop chasing me, although, like I say, that's going to be a little bit difficult, but as I went around the corner there, it stopped. So really, again, you just need to keep running around until it does go out of sight like this, and then it will stop chasing you once it stops seeing you. So it's chasing me, and as I were to go around it's going to empty until it's all the way empty and he stops chasing me and at the moment he's just going to stand still and again that will then work as it did before as you can see perfectly there so this is what we're going over and creating today very easy to customize so again I have him just stand there when he stops chasing me you can have him return to a guard position start random roaming, patrol, whatever you want to do it's very easy to set up and I'll show you how to do that as well so without further ado let me do this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a blueprint interface so this code is going to run nice and efficiently. So let's go to control space to open our content browser, right click, go to blueprint, create a blueprint interface and I'm going to name this BPI underscore detection. You can name this whatever you want but that makes no sense for me. I'm going to open it up straight away and in here we want to create four functions. We're going to start with creating start detection and on here we're going to add an input naming this AI and I'm going to set that to a character object reference. Now that's because my AI is a character blueprint. If yours is a pawn for example then set that to a pawn object reference. But for me it's a character. Now this is the only function we need to add an input on so the other three we don't need an input or an output so we can just add them in very easily. Next one is going to be stop detection then once again add function start chase and then finally last but not least add function stop chase so we've got start detection stop detection start chase and stop chase and on the start detection we have the input of ai which is a character object reference so we can compile save and close that as that's all we need to do in there then we're going to open up our widget so we can actually show on the screen that icon that appears fills and empties so we're going to right click, go to user interface, create a widget blueprint, create a user widget, and I'm going to name this W underscore detection meter. Opening that up straight away like so as well. In here we're going to go to panel, add in a canvas panel, and then on that canvas panel we're going to add in a progress bar. This progress bar we're going to change the background image and the fill image to be the meter which we have. As you can see I have these here. I just have a grey version and a red version and those are just two I've made very quickly in Photoshop. You can obviously make your own, use whatever you want and I'll leave a link for the, to these in the description down below. So we're just going to add those in there. So the empty will go on the background image and fill will go on the fill image. Then if we were to hover over one of these we can see the dimensions are 326 by 54. So let's add that in size Y, 326, size Y, 54. Now that's going to be the perfect size. I'm also going to set the anchor to be the top middle, position X and Y to both to be 0, alignment I'm going to set to 0.5 and then minus 3. That is just going to position it where I want on screen. Now you can set the alignment to whatever you want but that is going to be good for me here like so. Then what we want to do is we want to increase percent here to see what it's going to look like. And this isn't how I want it. So I don't want it to be that kind of dark blue black so we can just change the fill color and opacity and just reset it back to white and that's then going to use the colors which we want and then I also don't want it to fill from left to right so I'm going to change the bar fill type to fill from center horizontal and now you can see it's going to fill up like this which is perfect for how I want it and again you can obviously change this to be whatever you want but for me this is how I want it as this is how it typically is in these kind of games for example in payday 3. Then the final thing we want to do is we just want to set the default visibility from visible to hidden. 
we can compile and save that and that's all we need to do. Now we are going to make this rotate and face where the AI is but that will probably be in a later video. So I'm going to record this whole video in one however when I come to edit it depending on how long this video is I may split it up into two or three episodes so rotating this will be done later on. So we can close this like so. Next we want to open up our AI. Now if you don't have one don't worry you can just right click go to blueprint class create a character and then name it whatever you want so I have enemy AI open that up and then in here all I've simply done is just added in this mesh here. What we also want to do is add a component with that being pawn sensing like so and then we can modify these values to what we want. So I'm going to set the hearing threshold to 0 and 0, sight radius I'll leave as 5000, sensing interval I'll leave at 0.5, everything else I'll leave to default but I'll change the peripher peripheral vision angle to 75. I'll compile and save that and you can obviously mess about with this as much as you like to get it perfect for you and to get a good representation of it you can place your AI in the level and select it and you'll be able to see it here in the real world. So this is basically anything within this green cone that AI can see. So this might be too big, this might be too small, customize it for what you want. So for example if I were to lower the peripheral vision to 45 we'll get a much better idea of how far in front it can see and again obviously that changes based upon the angle so I might leave it like this and then maybe lower it down to 2500. I'm not really going to go too in depth with it but you obviously can mess about with it as much as you want as you can see perfectly here. Once we've added that in we want to go straight over to the event graph here with the pawn sensing still selected we want to press events on C pawn to add this event in here like so. The first thing we want to do is right click on pawn, promote this to a variable and name this detected player just so we have a nice easy reference to it for the code later on. Then we're going to hold down S left click to get a sequence and then we're going to do that again so we have another sequence connecting then 0 into that new sequence. Off of then one of the first sequence we're going to get a re-triggerable delay setting this to 0 0.6 seconds. Now essentially a re-triggerable delay will keep restarting from this duration every time it is fired off. So a normal delay won't do that, it will finish the delay, whereas this will restart it, which is what we want. And I set it to 0 0.6 because on my pawn sensing, my sensing interval is 0 0.5, so we want this to be longer. So you can have this be however long you want, but it has to be higher than the sensing interval. Off of completed of this, what we're going to do is get our detected player and then out of this we're going to stop detection, that message there, from the interface we created earlier. So again, essentially, this is then going to stop detecting the player. Then we'll go to the next sequence. Off of then zero of this, we're going to hold down O and left click to get a do once. The reset is going to be stop detection. So this is basically going to be when the AI has detected the player, which is why we only want to do it once until they have them stop detecting so they can be detected again. I hope that makes sense. So out of completed of the do once we're going to get detected player and then we're going to simply start detection through the message there like so and then the AI is going to be get a reference to self like so. So it's going to start detecting and the AI it has been detected by is obviously this AI which we're currently in right now. Then off of then one of the sequence we're going to hold down B and left click to get a branch with the condition is going to be a new variable we're going to create so hit the plus variable here naming this should chase question mark leaving that as a boolean and connecting that into the condition there. What we're going to do is we want to now actually chase the player. So what I'm going to do is just find some empty space right click create a custom event naming this chase player and then out of this I'm going to get an AI move to with the pawn being get a reference to self and the target actor I'll drag into the custom event there. We'll go back to the branch off of true we'll call function chase player with the target actor being our variable of detected player there. So I hope that all makes sense as to what we've done and why we've done it. So this code here is going to detect and stop detecting the player and then also chase the player once we have detected them and decided that we should 
chase them. We're going to set this up properly later, but essentially this will be true when that bar and the detection meter has filled up fully. So let's compile and save that like so. What we're going to do next is we're going to go up to class settings at the top. Under interfaces, we have an add button next to implemented interfaces, and we're going to search for the interface we created earlier. So I named mine BPI underscore detection. Now on the left, we have an interfaces tab, and we have our four functions in here. We want to simply just get start chase and stop chase. So now we can actually define what happens when we start and stop the chase, which is going to very simply just be setting the should chase variable. So we're going to set it to true on start chase and set it to false on stop chase. And then also on stop chase, what we're going to do is get AI move to with the pawn being get a reference to self and the target actor also being get a reference to self. So what this is going to do is it's just going to stop the AI in its tracks. It's going to basically move it to where it is currently. And that will just stop them chasing the player. Now, if you want them to go ran do random roam or go on a patrol or do something else or go back to where they were initially, you would put that here instead of this AI move to. It's very simple like that. You just simply replace this with what you want there, but making sure you are setting these variables like so. So we'll compile, save, and close this blueprint.